Hello friends, welcome to the next public key cryptography algorithm after the RSA which is known as the knapsack algorithm. Guys, the basic concept of this knapsack algorithm depends upon the NP completeness problem. This NP completeness problem you might have studied in the subject of advanced data structures wherein the NP complete problem deals with the weights of the processes which undergoes the execution and the knapsack algorithm also depends upon that concept so let's begin with it to begin with the knapsack we just uh, brief with the introduction of the two types of the cryptography techniques which we have already studied and that is the asymmetric and the symmetric one we all know that the symmetric is the secret key cryptography and asymmetric is the public key cryptography symmetric key cryptography data is encrypted using a key the same key must be used then to decrypt at the receivers and the security of the symmetric cryptography cryptography rests in the key and divulging the key is nothing but anyone could encrypt and decrypt the message and for this the example which we have studied is the des algorithm symmetric key problems is distribution of keys for the symmetric key the problem which it faces is the distribution of key over the communication channel the main problem here is getting the sender and the receiver agree on the secret key without anyone else knowing it, without anyone else finding out that secret key. If they are in the separate physical locations, they must trust a courier or a phone system or some other transmission medium to prevent the disclosure of their secret key, which they will be then using for the encryption and decryption of their message. Anyone who who overhears or intercepts the key in transit can later read, modify or forge all the messages encrypted using that secret key. Now the next concept is asymmetric public key cryptography which we know that for the encryption and decryption process with the asymmetric it uses two different keys and the ciphering algorithms are called the public key because one of the key then can be made as the public key here example can be a complete stranger can use the public encryption key to encrypt a message but only a specific person with the corresponding secret decryption key can decrypt the message in these systems the encryption key is often called the public key and the decryption key is often called the private key and for this asymmetric type of the public key, the example which we have seen is the RSA algorithm. Now, what are the concerns over the asymmetric public key cryptography? The concerns covers three major categories and those are fortitude in providing the unbreakable, practicality and applicability. Applicability, practical practicality, fortitude, these are considered as the three different categories of the concerns of the asymmetric public key cryptography. And also many of the algorithms are insecure. Among the secure algorithm, many are impractical. Some have too large key size or the ciphertext is much larger than the plain text. So these are the different types of the issues which asymmetric cryptography has also only few algorithms are both secure and practically implementable which then can give the security to your data some are only suitable for key distribution purpose some are only suitable for encryption purpose and so on so these are the some of the concerns which are then covered for the asymmetric public key cryptography then comes the new concept known as the knapsack which is considered considered as one of the earliest public key crypto system invented by ralph markle 
and Martin Hellman in the year 1978. And it is based on the subset sum problem, which is considered as the special case of the knapsack problem, where a given list of numbers and a third number, which is the sum of the subset of these numbers, determines the subset. In general, this is also known as the NP complete, as I told you in the previous of this lecture itself, that the basic or the basis of the knapsack depends upon the NP complete problem. However, there are some easy instances which can be solved very efficiently, or it may be difficult in some of the cases. However, the screen was this scheme of knapsack was again broken by Adi Shamir, not by attacking the knapsack problem, but rather by breaking the conversion from an easy knapsack to a hard one. So let's begin with it. What is basically a knapsack problem? Here, with the knapsack, we have been given a set of numbers. That set can carry any combination of numbers. Then we have to find a subset of that set whose elements add up to 53. Here we have just taken an example of 53. Is it 73? No. Then we have to find the combination just to find the subset of 53 from the numbers which are present in your original set. So just taking a trial, trial and error method, we balance this to take the number 38. Then we just have to arrange the 38 number in such a manner which will then give you the sum as 53. That is if we minus 53, if we minus 38 from 53 we get 15 which then can be written as 4 plus 11 which can then considered as a subset with the elements 38, 14, sorry 38, 11, 4 which is then can be considered as the subset of n and then it can be considered as the solution and generally to solve it what it needs is an np complete complexity com componential time behavior in terms of the size of the problem and in this case we have to just deal with the number of integers and then we need to backtrack we need to discard etc we need to backtrack to decrypt the message so how does the hellman markel hellman knapsack scheme works this scheme is to encode a binary message as a solution to a knapsack problem which reducing the ciphertext to target sum and obtained by adding terms corresponding to one's bits in the plain text so how does it exactly works? If suppose the plain text we have is in the binary format that is 101001011010 and the knapsack set is given as 12592043. So we just place the knapsack sets against the plain text binary message and then the target message target sum which we get is corresponding to the ones corresponding to the ones in the plain text so if we take if we consider here plain text one corresponds to knapsack one plain text one corresponds to five plain text one corresponds to 43 so the target sum for this first set would be 49 similarly the target set for the second set would be 27 2 5 and 20 27. So in this way we have to find the target sum for reducing the ciphertext. Then the next step is to find the super na increasing knapsack. Super increasing knapsack is the another form of the knapsack set when the elements of the set are arranged strictly such that the AK is greater than the summation of AJ from j1 to k minus 1. The knapsack problem becomes simpler. This kind of arrangement is called the super increasing knapsack. Here we can see that 
the set is arranged in a super increasing format wherein we can see that 1 plus 4 will give you 5 which then adds if we take the example of with like 1 4 11 17 38 73 so this can be considered as the example of the super increasing knapsack because the elements are ordered and an element is element a of i is always greater than the sum of all the lower elements and it is easy, easy to decide whether to discard or to include so then this is the concept of the super increasing knapsack where the every ith element is always greater than the sum of its lower elements how the encryption technique takes place with the knapsack it is obviously a public key capture system here the super increasing knapsack is considered as the private key and the non super increasing knapsack is considered as the public key so generally we have been given the super increasing increasing knapsack and then from the super increasing knapsack we have to find the normal knapsack which will then be giving you the public key so the genius of mark and helen was to discover a means to transfer a super increasing knapsack into the non super increasing knapsack which then gives you the public the private and the public key respectively the transformation is not obvious but reversible just taking this is just an example wherein a set is given s1 s2 s3 sm we just have to choose a multiplier w and a modulus n such that that n should be greater than the sum the last element of your set and this condition should also be satisfied where the value of multiplier w and n is relatively prime there should be no common factor in between and then the h h1 h2 till hm such that the h1 is nothing but multiplication of your multiplier with the modulus n and the single single elements of your previous set that is the single elements of your main set which then gives you the normal knapsack so just take an example of transforming super increasing knapsack into non super increasing knapsack suppose we have a set having 1 to 4 9 of elements and suppose we have a multiplier 15 and the value of n is 17 so how to convert the super increasing knapsack into non super increasing knapsack that is the first element of your set 1 into multiplier 15 mod of 17 and similarly with the other elements of your set 2 into 15 mod 17 4 into 15 mod 17 9 into 15 mod 17 in such a manner you will get the values which will give you the non super increasing knapsack which is nothing but the h 15 13 9 16 and this is considered as the non super increasing knapsack which is also then considered as your public key and the super increasing knapsack is then considered as your private key so how to start with the encryption process here if suppose we have been given a set of 1 to 4 9 which is considered as a private key as this is a super increasing knapsack and a set of h which we have discovered from the super increasing knapsack which is 15 13 9 and 16 and here this h is also considered as the public key we have a multiplier of 15 and the value of n is 17 so the m is 4 which means divide the plain text message into block of 4 bits so we have divided the message into a flock block of 4 bits each then with the non super increasing set non super increasing knapsack set 
the message is encoded as follows that means with the non super increasing set which is a public key we can then find the encryption process and we can then convert your plain text message into the cipher text so how do we do it the first set of plain text block that is 0100 into your 15 13 9 and 16 which then we just have to do a simple ma matrix multiplication here which gives you 13 then with the second set of block of plain text we have to multiply your set of non super increasing knapsack which gives you 40 and then the third block of plain text message which gives you 24 and then fourth which gives you 29 so in this way we can encrypt your plain text message by converting your plain text into blocks of four bits and then multiplying it with the non super increasing knapsack which is nothing but your public key so here in case of knapsack the public key is then used for the encryption process then how to decrypt the cipher text to decrypt what we have to do first is we just have to find the inverse of 15 mod 17 this calculation you can directly do with your scientific calculators and which gives you the value 8 so what is need to be done to get your plain text back multiply all the encrypted messages that is c with 8 mod 17 and to get the sum si that is to receive to recover your plain text what we have to do is we just have to multiply all the encrypted messages c with the a with the value 8 mod of 17 so the first value which we got as the encrypted message as a cipher text c was 13 from the previous slide we can see the 13 40 24 and 29 so the first cipher text was 13 so we multiplied with 8 mod of 17 which gives you 2 and if you write it in binary this is the binary transformation of this decimal value so in the same manner we can convert the every cipher text message which we have got from the encryption process and then we can convert it into its corresponding plain text so 13 followed by 40 24 and 429 which gives you these binary conversions of cipher text into the plain text and hence you can recover your plain text message back by following the decryption process of the knapsack so this way you can find the inverse inverse 15 mod 17 in 15 into y mod of 17 is 1 so this is just the process which is being given to you to find the inverse of 15 mod 17 i just hope that you might have got the concept of the knapsack problem thank you